What it do, Ski? It's your boy, Phil 34 and today I'm here with my reaction video to Torchwood. This one is season one, episode nine. How's it going, everybody? So, uh, Susie got bodied quite a bit last time. Let's see where things go from here. Um... Oh yeah, they ended last episode off with, uh, with, with like hinting that Jack and, uh, and Yonto could be a thing. Maybe. With that being said, let's just see how the team continues to grow. So as always, if you enjoyed this one, then definitely be sure to smack that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that being said, let's get into this one, guys. Yeet! The 21st century is when everything Everything changes. changes. iPhones, BBM, everything changes. And as for life, well, that just bloody whizzes by. So then, this is me, Eugene Jones. Are you related to Martha? Hey, Quinn, Jack, uh, Tosh. Maybe Roll smashed his face on the road. He? But that, that looks a lot like me. Your bag, nothing. I mean, what was he doing here? Am I dead? Ooh! Am I dead? Boy's a ghost. Am I dead? Well, you're, you're certainly not alive. Also, can we just talk about Jack's earpiece? <laughs> it's so odd. <laughs> Random shoes. Stick with the team. This is Torchwood. It's gonna be okay. What? Of course, I'm invisible. Why am I invisible? Just some pictures of random shoes. Let's back up a bit. I mean, every story's got a beginning. Rushmore, a hey, 34. 42. Take Dad a minute, took the day off work to come and see me. Everyone blamed me for losing the final. But it must have been what happened afterwards that started this whole thing off. I was stuck in the first bunker, whacking away at all the sand. And this fell out of the sky and landed beside me. From the sky? Yeah. Yeah. Is he bestowing upon him ghost powers? Oh. Oh, well, where could that have come from? It fell from the sky. Isn't that amazing? Where the bloody hell have you been? Dad was mad at me for losing the final, but now I had the eye. And what I realized was, if it fell from the sky, it probably belonged to an alien. Coming of age story with the boy in his alien eyeball. That was the night Dad went away. This kind of reminds me of uh, you end of end end of the FM world. Just sort of like the narration, <clears throat> starting off it when he was younger, going back, uh, the music selection. God, I wanted that alien to come back and claim his eye more than I wanted anything in my life. I waited. As I got older, I became interested in UFOs, watched the stars. So it became a big fan of Torchwood. For my alien. Ooh, I think we're gonna get hit in the fuels this episode. Quite make contact. You sure it's my Eugene? Shit. What are we doing here? Do you understand what's happened to your brother, Terry? Yep. He walked into a road and got run over. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, this is truly legendary. Oh. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Watching yourself <clears throat> being operated on. Very drunk guy. I'll pass. Damn, feels bad. He's a ghost, but he can't even float. That's pretty shit. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but the rest of us are human, and amazingly, we still manage to get on with our job. Okay, you two. Okay, fine. So how does Gwen get to pick up on it? I'm trying to think. Come in here every day. Two eggs, ham and chips every day. Two eggs, ham and chips, please. Wow, this is so weird. Mm -hmm. I used to follow you around. But phone Gary. He might know something. Phone Gary. Phone Gary. Oh, so he's communicating with her a decent amount. Um, I'll give you a call back later. That is so beautiful. Hello. I want to return some DVDs on behalf of someone who's deceased. 
Deceased, no shit. It's oh pretty God. final. It's making me nostalgic hey, for Blockbuster. I think you used to come in, yeah. I used to live with there. A mate. 34 pounds, please. 34 pounds? 34 again? Not about the ages. Maybe he just couldn't live with his failure. Failure? Is that right? I mean, maybe I never quite lived up to my early promises of maths genius, but that's because I was waiting for the alien to collect his eye and change my life. And while I was waiting, I joined past more telly cells. Hey, the guy with the personal hygiene problem. <laughs> Nothing changes, really. I was just wondering whether you saw Eugene the day he died. No. Sorry. Good luck on your new job. He's dead. No. What was it for, then? His mum, you idiot. Can you rub it up? It's in Biro. Just get white out. Call it a day, man. I had a few things to sort out. I'll be back later. Yeah, we'll make it quick. I said I'd love to get away from it all and go to Australia. Eugene suddenly got very excited. He said, yes, you've got to go. So he was going to pay for a ticket for you to go to Australia with him? Mm. Was he in love with you? Or where was he going to get the money from? You said uh, you haven't bought a new pair of socks in six years. I said you haven't even had a new pair of socks in six years. And he said, that's, that's your phone. He said, I'm going to sell it. I said, what? He said, my the eye. artifact. It's an alien body part, and I'm gonna sell it on eBay. Eugene, it's very <laughs> nice of you. Alien it's eyes, starting bid 20 quid. Buy now for 50. Of course. Eugene, you've got a couple more bids. That's crazy. Bloody hell, 75 quid. <laughs> that was just the beginning. 200, 300. Who is bidding for this alien eyeball? And then one day it just jumped. 15k. I don't understand. Someone gave him the eye as a consolation prize? He may be able to square the route to the square friggin' road, but he couldn't cross the friggin' road. Terry, please. It works for a big corporation. Huh? What corporation? We keep America. mentioning it. Stop giving us that shit. He works at the garage on Filey Road. He's a cashier, works nights. Feels bad. Oh my goodness. Life can be such a letdown, can't it? All those years, I believe my dad had gone to America because I was a failure. And here he was all along, doing his important secret work in Filey Road, Cardiff. I've spent my life believing in stupid stories, fantasies. I've wasted my life. Once I've seen him there, everything I dreamed about was like rubbish, including the eye. So why not sell it? Along with the woodworm treatment and loft insulation and all the other crap floating around the world. No, no, don't quit. It's okay. So is by him being in the same proximity of her, she's just becoming more aware? I don't know. Eugene had an alien eye in his collection. He sold it online. A Dogon six eye? There was a trade in them. Let you see behind you where you've been. Kind of puts things in perspective. Gary and me were gonna go to that talk in Aberystwyth. Black holes and antimatter were pretty important to me and Gary. But if I'm gonna spend a night by the sea, I know who I'd rather be with. Black holes and the uncertainty principle. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> well, man's did the dash. I'm not proud of what I've done. Gary. I created three or four online aliases and used them to inflate the price. But why? I think it's him. Who? The alien. My alien. I think he's come back to claim what's rightfully his. He couldn't contact me any other way, so, so he chose eBay. Or cyberspace. I mean, even an online auction has a certain elegant symmetry. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't spend that kind of money unless it's my own personal private body part or something. Would you? No. No? No way. I remember, yes. Uh, I met up with him before he went to meet the alien. So he went to make the exchange, £15,000, £5.50 for the eye, right? They're just random shoes, I should think. Up towards, um, with, with, with a great door, which said something about, um... Pac-Man? I love you. I love you. So he can't touch things or people, but he can sleep on the bed and walk around. 
happy cook. A happy cook. Right, let's see how we wrap up this story. I opened the door. And then I walked in and saw my mates. We are the alien man. We bought it. We are the official buyers. Can we see the merchandise? You said you thought it was the alien. <laughs> we thought, well, come on, Eugene, get real. But then we thought, let him dream, man. Life's short and really bore him. You bid 15,000. Not us, no, no way. <laughs> Someone else bid the 15,000, but then he got greedy. Catch up, please. 15,000 the 15, and then... Banana milkshake? I checked the bid history. Mr. C. Blackstaff is a collector of alien ephemera and Nazi memorabilia. Also, beanie babies. Teeny bit cuckoo, but endearingly rich. These are awful friends, eh? So, they're inconveniencing customers. But I was damned if I was gonna let it go for 34 pounds and a banana milkshake. Yeah. Huh? Well, that's just not acceptable behavior. Not at a happy cock. So you tossed him out? Oh my god, that is so weird. You bastards, you are so dead. It would be in your best interest if- Shut up, Josh. The woman is complaining, man. You got God, bud. What did you do that for, twat? I'm missing. This is a weird ass so episode. So he ran out the door and you two ran up. All those cars, all those lives moving through space, all that humanity whizzing by in a frenzy of burgers and chips. Bank holiday fun, burst tires, screaming kids, sudden heart attacks. Put me through, thanks. I've got some bad news, I'm afraid. Now I remember. Apart from a buzzing in my ear where Josh whacked me, I felt good. I was running across a field on a Saturday morning. The smell of exhaust and banana milkshake. A slight nausea, heart beating too fast because I wasn't that fit. All the stuff that tells you you're alive. By rights, I should be well pissed off. But I realised I was given a chance mm -hmm. to look back on my life and see it for what it really was. An ordinary bloke who made a mess of things. Good honey boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Be there in sunshine and in shadow. Dad made a mess of things. And that's a shame, really, because we missed each other completely. This is just a really sad episode. <laughs> to go soon, Gwen. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to ask you to do that. There it is. So if it's the eye that's been keeping me here, why the hell am I still hanging around? The eye is in the bag now, rather than in you. Are you? Jack, can you give me five? Yeah. In an average lifetime, the human heart will beat two million times. You'll produce over 8,000 gallons of saliva and grow 350 miles of hair. You'll eat the equivalent in weight of six elephants. Gwen? Oh, isn't life amazing? Gwen! Gwen! Hi. Eugene. Are you okay? Eugene, you're on my leg. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's sorry. fine. Sorry. It's fine. Can you see me? <laughs> Thanks. No, thank you. <laughs> That's okay. That's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Goodbye, Gwen. <laughs> what? Don't go now, Eugene. Eugene, please don't go now. Eugene, please. Please. He's her eye in the yeah, sky. Life is full of near misses and absolute <laughs> hits, of great love and small disasters. It's made up of banana milkshakes, loft insulation, and random shoes. It's dead ordinary and truly, truly amazing. So breathe deep and swallow it whole, because take it from me, life just whizzes by, and then all of a sudden it's. 
All right. That was Torchwood Season 1, Episode 9. That was my reaction video. And I gotta say, you know what? I feel a little bit mixed with this episode. Obviously, this had to do with, you know, this this guy, Eugene, who things really didn't go all too well in life at, cer at certain points, right? With his childhood and his pops leaving. And then I can see what they were trying to go for this episode in making him sort of like us have a different perspective on his life. And this whole, you know, afterlife ordeal, he gets a new perspective, a newfound perspective on life. Um, his father comes back, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's supposed to be sort of like this, I guess, like heartfelt, endearing story. Like it, I feel like it sort of worked at, at, at the approach. Moments where him and Gwen are, are, are they're sort of making it seem like they're having a conversation with each other. I think it works half the time. And then I feel like this episode borderline, like it, it's sort of on the borderline of being sort of hitting that emotional core throughout the episode and that tone. But then at other points, it just feels it feels totally off. But, they're, but I, I can see what they're going for and I can appreciate it. And I think it works around half the time for me maybe a little bit just a little bit more than half the time i think for look i think from a mystery aspect as the episode starts to unravel i think they do a pretty decent job you know what? i definitely do see more of the sentimental aspect to this episode obviously with uh the idea of perspective and this one fatal incident in his childhood that sort of you know sort of skewed his his life moving forward it wasn't really until by the end of this episode and this whole through this whole journey in the afterlife that he was able to sort of come to this sort of conclusion and resolution internally and be like okay you know he was able to to realize you know it wasn't really his fault and internalize or misinterpret situations that happened whether it's his father leaving after the math situation etc etc and that led him to where he ended up in life but it also resulted in him finding you know uh, i guess his 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 passions and his interests with it was kind of dark that in the end it doesn't really matter like none of that really mattered that he like in the end he still was dead and um, isolated alone feeling like feeling like a failure just because he couldn't change his perspective so in that regard i think this episode works so i i, I think what i what i would think was lacking from this episode was just all the pieces clicking because i think at, at certain points like the framing here worked really well having eugene and gwen in the same frame i thought it was actually the way that they played that worked really well at points choice for him to sort of come to this realization after saving gwen like oh like this one moment i guess makes up for my entire life i don't know if i would have would have liked to see him sort of struggle with that a little bit more and be like oh no i'm dying like i just figured out my perspective um but they they sort of double down the idea like nope he realizes but he's dead so it's kind of like a sad but also kind of a happy note but mostly sad that he's just dead and realizes after the fact. I think I gotta think about this one a little bit more, but for me, I feel like this episode was missing just a little bit more oomph emotionally. I don't know if that's whether with that's with the soundtrack or maybe the execution was a little bit off at points, but with that being said, guys, that was Torchwood season one, episode nine. what do you think about this one? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, so you, I, I mean, in the end of it, by the end of this one, I guess it seems that uh, one, he's got absolutely garbage friends, but two, <laughs> um, that the eye was actually real because Jack was sort of going on going on about it a little bit so that kind of confirms that there, it might have some authenticity but also authenticity but also at the end of that uh, obviously he came back to some capacity everyone saw him and he just sort of disappeared into the way that was that was kind of a weird ending but uh, yeah guys I'd love to hear your thoughts about this one because I can see the sentimental value to this episode but I feel like it just missed the mark for me ever so slightly but um, maybe I gotta watch this one again but I, I think they, 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 they did a pretty good job I guess this idea of perspective of life and how you look at things and fixing yourself up and not beating yourself up too much. Anyway, with that being said, guys, that was it for this one and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.